For a while, it was just the FBI that could crack iPhones. Foam cracking and extracting technologies have proliferated quite a bit since then. Over 2,000 government agencies and police departments across the U.S. have purchased tools that allow them to crack supported Android and iPhones. And it's not just the U.S., less than ethical regimes in Russia, China, Belarus, Venezuela, Myanmar, and others have acquired technologies that allow them to crack phones. There are a handful of companies that sell these technologies to governments and large corporations around the world. The most notable company is the publicly traded Israeli company, Celebrite. What is impressive is they consistently crack lock-supported phones with supported iOS and Android operating systems. Celebrite offers extraction from locked iPhones that Apple currently supports. This means circumventing security controls and even cracking their encryption. So the big question is how? For this technical analysis, we will mainly focus on Celebrite. It is important to note that all of these technologies involve physical access to the phone, usually by connecting via wire. It is also important to note that these companies are very secretive. This is an analysis of a fluid and proliferating technology that is based on the limited information available. We are attempting to fill in some gaps. Device cracking and data extraction varies widely. It depends on variables such as hardware, OS, device power and boot status, as well as other security controls. There are a few types of data extraction. Logical file system and physical extraction are widely offered. There are also a few more sophisticated and invasive techniques that are a whole different process, which we'll cover toward the end. First, let's explain the basics of how data extraction works and the security controls on iPhones, then we'll address how they circumvent these security controls. The most straightforward is logical extraction. It's the quickest and least intrusive, but provides the most limited data. It copies the data that the user could see under normal use. This is generally done by exploiting system backups to create a copy of the user accessible files such as phone book calls, messages, pictures, and other data. Logical extraction generally won't include recently deleted data, unlike other methods. In late 2020, Celebrate announced they could crack Signal's encryption of data at rest, which we cover in another video. Signal responded by somehow acquiring a Celebrate device and connecting it to a phone that they had loaded with malicious code. Then they extracted that malicious code from the phone onto the Celebrate device. That code was used to analyze the Celebrate software which runs on Windows OS. Signal found two Celebrite MSI packages had digital signatures for Apple's iTunes Windows installer, which we assume to be fraudulent. The Celebrite software also contains DLLs that iTunes uses to interact with iOS. The logical extraction for iOS works similarly to how iTunes takes backups. Basically, logical data extractors communicate with the OS API through an agent they upload to the device or the extraction software communicates directly with the OS API through the USB connection. The extractor software basically sends commands that are received by the device's memory and executed. The result is the data is easily organized and assembled in a human-readable format by the extractor device. Logical Extraction's closely related cousin is file system extraction. This basically extracts the containers within a file system. This includes the user-accessible data that logical extraction takes, but also extracts files and folders that the device uses to populate applications, as well as system configurations and user configurations. With file system access, you can review all pictures, notes, app data, text messages, and the corresponding logs for each. This usually relies on rooting or jailbreaking the phones to insert a bootloader to access the device's memory, instead of using the OS API. Obviously, there are security controls and encryption that attempt to prevent this. We'll address how they circumvent those later. The file system extraction will also need to be decoded with another tool. Then there's physical extraction, which is the most popular method. This extracts raw data at the binary level from the device's storage and memory. It can be done by copying the physical storage and memory bit by bit or via a hex dump. This may require booting the phone into a custom OS and or partial device disassembly for physical access to the memory chip to obtain a raw reading of the underlying flash blocks. Physical extraction can even contain deleted data that hasn't been overwritten yet. Remember, deleting a file just deletes the pointer and unreserves the space in storage, but that data will still be there until it is overwritten. Now that we have a good understanding of the three methods, let's discuss a few notable security controls in place to prevent this. Obviously, iOS requires authenticating USB data connections, but some data is exchanged to initiate the request, leaving some attack surface. Like most devices, iPhones have a secure boot chain is designed to ensure the lowest levels of software aren't compromised. Each step of the boot process requires components to be cryptographically signed and the boot proceeds only after verifying this chain of trust. Since iOS 8, Apple has enabled device encryption when a user sets a passcode for device lock, basically meaning the data on the device is encrypted when locked. 
so you would think any of these methods would yield encrypted data without the passcode. Starting with iPhone 5S and later versions, as well as Macs and iPads, Apple rolled out Secure Enclave. Basically, all lock Apple devices are encrypted with random private root keys which are only accessible by the Secure Enclave. Those keys are fused to the Secure Enclave chip which is isolated from the rest of the device. The Secure Enclave is its own system on a chip with a boot ROM to establish a hardware root of trust, an ADS engine for efficient and secure cryptographic operations, dedicated protected memory, and a dedicated processor. Similar to application processor boot ROM, the Secure Enclave boot ROM is immutable code that generates a random ephemeral memory protection key for the memory protection engine. The Secure Enclave processor has a memory protected engine, encrypted memory, secure boot, a dedicated random number generator, and its own AES engine. The Secure Enclave is shielded from debugging interfaces like JTAG. Important to note that after boot but before the first unlock, there is less data on the RAM and there are no encryption keys stored on the RAM. The key is only in the Secure Enclave and it's tied to Pascone only. After first unlock, a small amount of data remains unencrypted and a key is stored on the RAM that is then encrypted with a key in the Secure Enclave. This key is tied to Pascone and or biometrics. This is an oversimplification. There are more processes running that require instant decryption so the key is more exposed and generally the attack surface is much larger after first unlock. So generally it's much easier to crack after first unlock. Okay, now let's talk about how they circumvent security controls and crack them. Let's progress from older supported phones and iOS versions to newer and more hardened ones. According to Celebrite and other phone extractors, both logical and file system extraction on locked devices require them to jailbreak the device. Physical extraction involves booting to a special OS, which is basically a tethered jailbreak. According to a security researcher, there is an unpatchable vulnerability that allows these iPhones to be jailbroken over USB, and the iPhones can be jailbroken regardless of what OS they are running. The list of phones affected by this unpatchable vulnerability is identical to the list of locked iPhones Celebrite advertised cracking. This advertisement was before Celebrite and other companies added a few newer phones to the list, more on those newer ones later. A vulnerability was discovered during iOS 12 beta. Apple patched a critical use after free vulnerability in iBoot USB code, but this led to the discovery of a boot ROM vulnerability in the exact list of iPhones Celebrite advertises cracking with their extraction device iPhone 8 SE and X are compatible with the latest iOS versions, but newer phones running the same OS are not affected. All of this points to a memory corruption vulnerability within the device firmware. Boot ROM has a very small size and can be called a light version of iBoot as they share most of the system and library code. Unlike iBoot, Boot ROM cannot be updated. It is put in the internal read-only memory when a device is manufactured. Boot ROM is the hardware root of trust of the secure boot chain. Boot ROM vulnerabilities allow an attacker to control the booting process and execute unsigned code on a device. Important to note this vulnerability is in the iPhone's main boot ROM, not the secure enclave boot ROM. When you look at the researcher's exploit instructions on GitHub, it includes connecting to the phone via USB and entering the iPhone into device firmware update or DFU mode, and then running commands. DFU mode allows transferring a signed image to a device via USB that will be booted later. Given the context, this makes sense. The exploit developed for this vulnerability can jailbreak devices which allows for circumventing the authenticated boot chain allowing decrypting key bags that store firmware decryption keys, decrypting the firmware, dumping secure ROM on some devices, dumping and flashing nor on some devices and demoting device to older standards. The GID key that decrypts firmware key bags is a shared key among similar devices. That key was obtained prior to this exploit. Although the root UID key that decrypts the user data is still protected in the secure enclave. Since it's a vulnerability in the boot mechanism, it seems good for physical extraction which requires tethered jailbreak, which is booting the phone into a custom OS with a bootloader. It also seems good for jailbreaking the device for logical or file system extraction. This seems effective for before and after first unlock. Okay, so we have a way to jailbreak, boot into a custom OS, and extract the data. But most phones' data is still encrypted on the data partition that's managed by the Secure Enclave, which was engineered to protect against this type of scenario. In 2017, way before the previously mentioned exploit, a group of hackers decrypted the Secure Enclave firmware to explore how Secure Enclave works. This was likely done through electromagnetic analysis, more on that later. Or it could have been done by breaching Apple and stealing keys. 
Then Chinese hackers from the Pangmutine likely leveraged this information to uncover the unpatchable vulnerability on the 7 through A11 bionic chips used for secure enclave. This vulnerability could be exploited to break the encryption of the private security key and thus decrypt the user data. This vulnerability affects iPhone 5s all the way through iPhone X, same phones affected by the other vulnerability, and same phones that Celebrite advertises cracking with their extraction device. Again, this is a hardware or firmware vulnerability. This vulnerability and exploit is built on top of the boot ROM vulnerability. Since it's decrypting the private security key, this means it decrypts data after first unlock. Okay, so we have a way to crack some of the older supported phones regardless of iOS version. Now what about the newer phones? Worth noting the methods we're about to cover are also used on older phones too. Celebrite advertises cracking iPhones XR, SX, and 11 that are running up to iOS 13.7. These are almost always cracked with brute force passcode attacks. Leaked instructions show how the gray key phone extractor includes capabilities that can push an agent on the locked phone to automate brute force passcode attempts. Celebrate has a similar tool. We suspect this agent has something to do with the iTunes, Windows, DLLs, and digital signatures Celebrite stole to enable its software to interact with iOS, or some other reverse engineering of integrated Apple products and accessories that seem to communicate with iOS and maybe firmware via an agent. Some newer iOS versions have a security control that slows password entry rates before first unlock after booting. So depending on the phone, OS, boot status, and passcode, it can take minutes to days to crack. Starting just before iOS 12, Apple added USB restricted mode, which disables USB one hour after lock. In addition, there are other various conditional controls that disable USB data transfer on locked devices. Vendors like GrayShift and Celebrite have reportedly been able to circumvent USB restricted mode. On iPhones XR, SX, and 11 that are running up to iOS 13.7, it's unclear how. While they seem to install an agent on a lock iPhone with stolen DLLs and certificates, it's unclear if the DLLs and certs allow circumventing USB restricted mode or circumventing passcode lockouts. You think Apple would patch these software vulnerabilities? Given the specifications of iOS versions and iPhones, we have a few different theories explaining how they circumvent USB and passcode controls. First, since Apple has responded to news of these extractors by basically saying they balance security and ease of use, it's possible some of the iOS versions have functions like Windows iTunes integration and backups that are inherently vulnerable, and Apple is willing to accept the vulnerability to preserve functionality. Some iPhone models were built before these iOS protections were released, so it's possible the iOS protections are just not compatible with some iPhone models' hardware and or firmware. Firmware on the ROM provides necessary instructions for different hardware components to communicate with one another. So it's possible they exploit hardware and firmware to circumvent iOS and its built-in protections. Then they access or communicate with a processor and other hardware involved with passcodes and keys. It's likely some combination varying by device. It's unclear how newer iPhones and versions of iOS address this, but the brute force agent does not seem effective with newer iPhones or iOS versions. To crack iPhones 12 Plus and or iPhones running iOS 14 Plus, Celebrite and other companies require sending them to their shop. They are likely utilizing a few different methods in-house. A new enhanced brute force method may be on the horizon. Researchers have shown that monitoring and analyzing power patterns and the processor's electrical magnetic behavior during a brute force attack can speed up cracking the passcode. This is called a side channel attack. Although with the secure enclave's isolation, this becomes much harder. Extractor companies may already be doing something like this in-house. The device could also be disassembled to possibly intercept the data as it travels between subcomponents within the same chip. Or a tactic like this could be used to intercept keys as they are transmitted between subcomponents within the secure enclave, especially during boot. Although this would still require another step to unwrap the keys. This requires a very skilled forensic expert. This is probably the in-house service that Celebrite advertises. There are a few other ways to extract the unencrypted data. The chances are if police are searching a home, they'll take any computers too. If the iPhone already has a valid pairing record on a computer, then a logical extraction can be obtained from a locked iPhone, either by spoofing the computer or gaining access to that computer. Celebrite can also clone SIM cards. This could theoretically be used to spoof the old phone and gain access to data. It's possible the companies are exploiting unknown negative day vulnerabilities in the operating system. They would likely do it in-house to keep a secret, so that Apple doesn't patch the vulnerability. For example, the Australian phone cracking company Azimuth cracked the San Bernardino shooter's phone using a bug in open-source code from Mozilla that Apple relied on to allow accessories to be plugged into the iPhone's lightning port. 
although this was not a negative day. They then found another vulnerability and gained control over the processor and circumvented the brute force controls on the iPhone 5. Companies may be coming up with new secret exploits like this that would quickly be patched if discovered on supported versions. The trend here seems clear. The longer the devices have been released to the public, the more likely extraction companies will find a vulnerability to exploit. Software vulnerabilities are valuable to spyware companies that can quickly and scullably exploit the vulnerability before the vendor patches it. Extraction companies don't have that luxury, so they must keep software vulnerabilities a secret, so they cannot build extractor products to exploit software vulnerabilities. On the other hand, hardware and some unpatchable firmware vulnerabilities offer a virtually unlimited amount of time to exploit as long as you have physical access. As new phones are released by Apple, they seem to be getting physically hardened. If physical security is a concern, newer phones offer the best protection.